Council Member Harlan. Here. Council Member Bertrand. Here. <laughs> Council Member Bottorf. Here. Council Member Peterson. Here. And Mayor Termini. Here. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additional materials for this evening? None. Well, I just want to make sure everybody got the spreadsheet I handed out on the capital. Everyone had project. their spreadsheet on CIP? Yep. Tonight's meeting, uh, our technician tonight is Lynn Dutton, and the meeting can be viewed from the website as well. Thank you, Lynn. Let the camera be kind to me and the rest of the council members, and we'll go on to additions and deletions of the agenda. Are there any? Staff has no changes. We'll move on to public comment. Anyone who would like to address the council on items not on this evening's agenda, please step forward. Seeing none, we'll move on to city council and staff comments. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, do you have anything to say to us tonight? Yeah, I suppose I do. <laughs> um, since we're talking about the budget, um, well, nice. I thought we it would be a good time maybe to solicit public comments or suggestions as to how to uh, weather the storm that's ahead of us. So uh, was it last council meeting, which I missed, but I thought I heard somebody came up uh, and, and just mentioned Rispin Mansion. He says, you know, why, why don't we turn that into some sort of profit-making ordeal? And it was like, I don't know if we'd thought about that, and I don't know whether it's even practical, but um, the notion of people, you know, the public, and we have a lot of old officials and people have been around here a long time who could come to us and say you know here's an idea here maybe we hadn't thought of or here's an efficiency that we did back in the old days or here's a, a department that we used to do differently um, because for those in the listening audience who don't pr appreciate yet what our budget crisis is that's looming it has to do with the PERS obligation right which is the basically government pensions. So the state has burdened us with a larger share of that uh, obligation uh, more recently, and, and it's gonna hit us harder in the next coming year. So I think the numbers are half a million dollars next year and then $2 million every year thereafter. So that's like 13% of our budget, 15 million is what we have. So that's a sizable chunk of money we're gonna have to come up with, and some creative ideas uh, might be worthwhile good news is we did talk to the auditor and when we were um, uh, looking at you know selecting different audit agencies and they all said that we were in good shape at least we were thinking about this I mean I know this has been on a, on our radar for a while and we have the emergency funds and we've been we've been you know planning for for this for a while but we are not there yet it's going to continue to be a problem and um, you know, we've got plenty of ideas, but what worries me is that, you know, there's, we're just going to end up doing the, the obvious things, which is, you know, more taxes, either sales tax or hotel taxes, or reduce, reducing services, which is either a layoff or eliminating some department. And I know we've talked about cannabis tax, maybe that's our saving grace. Um, but again, the, the notion of, soliciting the public for some input um, maybe maybe we'll get some good ideas out there thank you thank you um, I'm gonna answer this the rest of staff staff any comments I um, just wanted to let the council know that uh, today I received um, a call from the supporters of the uh, ballot initiative and they expect to be bringing the petitions in um, end of the week it is the rail trail Spending capital, spending no money. Okay, great. And now, council members, Ed. I just wanted to address the treasurer on, oh. on the idea of the RISPN. Well, I, I have no other comments, but just that's good enough. Just with regard to the RISPN, it's a term that I like to use, which might help you when we start thinking about other uses. Is when you say the word RISPN, think of the word Titanic. And I think that it's best to leave it alone at the bottom of the ocean. Best to leave the RISPN entombed. I don't think it's a revenue source ever. I don't think it has a lot of, I think, I don't, I'm gonna go beyond think. I think this council, many generations of this council has tried to do many things with it and the, the, the useful use of it other than possibly if we get it into a park and are able to turn it over to some lessee that wants to take care of the maintenance 
once we get it all done and we we go down that road could be possible but don't be thinking that that's that somebody that's going to come to the podium is going to have a miraculous new innovation that hasn't been thought of. Thanks. Time, and times change, but for 30 years, Rispin was an albatross of potential profit. Uh, I didn't mean to belabor the, yeah. the Rispin. I just started the notion of a, a you know a clever idea. Sure. Or, or even if the public saying, um, you know, here here are some efficiencies, or you know, don't touch this. Here's here's our third rail. Don't whatever you do, don't touch our special projects. I mean, if there's, and the more input we get like that, I think the easier it'll make uh, our decision. And, and uh, you know, the, the, su the subjects or the, the, the activity of with the budget is going to go through the Financial Advisory Committee, right? So we're going to, they're going to come through us first and we're going to have, uh, get to call through the ideas and maybe come up with some new ones. But, so, but I, as a member of this, as the chair of the Financial Advisory Committee, would welcome even crazy ideas like like the Rispin to at least to evaluate. Agreed. Uh, Kristen, anything? Nope, nothing. Left. Jacques? We were, we were filmed a couple of meetings ago. What's, did you know who that was? Anybody know about that? It was in the chambers. It was for the footage for the Man of the Year Award. Oh, Trying to okay. get some footage of Ed in action. <laughs> oh, good. And there, good. there was some great footage. Okay. There was action shots. There was <laughs> nicely done. Congratulations, Ed. Congratulations. Um, Getting out of the year, and um, I have uh, no comments except next Wednesday our concerts start. So come on down there. Let's go to the consent calendar. There's only one item: the minutes from our last meeting. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. We move on to general government <coughs> public hearings. Continue discussion, and. Um, possible adoption of our next budget, Mr. City Manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm just gonna give a quick recap, sort of a summary of where we're gonna go this evening and then our finance director is gonna pick up the ball and start running with it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just quickly touch on the budget sort of summary that we touched on last meeting. We'll skim through it pretty quickly because I know the council has all seen it. We do have an update then to present about sales tax data and some proposed cuts to bring the budget back into balance. Um, at that point, then we're going to pivot and talk a little bit more about the CIP and the workload within public works. We'll be uh, then focusing on the response to the council questions which were raised at our last budget hearing. And we will be focusing on some of the items that the treasurer uh, mentioned during his comments about sort of long-term per strategies. And then lastly, we'll be pivoting, I think, to the council actions and the direction staff needs for this evening. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jim for the presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so real quickly, just to kind of recap from our last meeting, our, our local economy is remaining relatively stable, but we're starting to see some of our major revenue sources slow down and even decline when we talk about sales tax. Um, our budgets are status quo, same as last year. Um, no net new positions, no new revenues, and CalPERS still is our, our major threat on the horizon as far as uh, city resources are concerned. And then again, uh, we're heavily relying on sales tax, and now that we're seeing sales tax <coughs> dip a little bit, it's causing a lot of uh, concern from our side. Um, on the proposed budget, we're estimating an ending fund balance roughly at 931000 for June of 2019. Um, contrary to recent articles, our reserve levels are fully funded and remaining intact. The Capitola Library will begin this year. Measure This is our first year of Measure F money and also our first full year of the SB1 Road Maintenance and Rehabilitation Act money. And this is a general fund summary, and I'll, I'll touch on a couple of these on the next slide, but the, um, you'll see here that we're estimating that our ending fund balance for the current fiscal year, here ending in a month, is right around 908,000, and that our balance, our, uh, our budget is balanced and revenues exceeding expenditures by just slightly under 23,000. So again, uh, on the revenue side, we're seeing uh, sales tax slowing. Other, uh, other than property tax, really all of our revenue sources are, are really kind of flattening out. Property tax is kind of propping them up a little bit right now. Uh, you'll see a decline in charges for services. It was really kind of a spike last year as we, uh, the State Department of Finance allowed us to get the rest of the money for the RISPIN loan paid back to the general fund. And then uh, on uses of money and property, the increase there is primarily due to interest rates rising. 
and actually CalPERS just put one out right before this meeting and we're at a big 180 now, 1.8%. So it's been probably about seven or eight years since we've seen it at that level. On the expenditure side, uh, personnel, the increases are primarily due to the CalPERS cost that the treasurer mentioned and the UAL, UAL specifically. Uh, contract services, as uh, the city manager mentioned, we did do some reductions from our last meeting in order to get the uh, budget balanced, and we'll go over those as well. And the other financing uses, you'll see the, the big decrease there is really that last year we had a one-time transfer of fund balance over <coughs> to the library project. This is um, the graphical picture of that, if you will. And the takeaway on this slide is the last time we showed you this slide, the sales tax had 1% growth annually and you can see we've zeroed that out right now we won't get the um, sales tax data for the most recent quarter till probably the end of june and we may come back and revise at that point but right now we're really not sure exactly what's driving it down so revisions from our last meeting a couple of weeks ago uh, as i mentioned we reduced sales tax revenue projections both in our current fiscal year as well as uh, our proposed budget and planned budget and the, the um, in this fiscal year that's a direct hit to our ending fund balance so last meeting we were just a little bit above a million dollars ending fund balance now we're down around nine hundred thousand it also uh, our district sales taxes measures O and F also take a hit on those um, forty eight thousand in the current year and then ten just almost eleven thousand in the eighteen nineteen and then just under twenty two thousand in nineteen twenty on the expenditure side, uh, so we reduced contract services by 93,000 and I have, there was a list in the uh, agenda packet and I have the slide on that as well. Also, we adjusted down on the CalPERS payment. Uh, we're, gonna, we're planning on making the annual payment in July rather than spreading it out over the full 12 months of the year and we save about three and a half percent by doing it that way. I think this will be the fourth or fifth year in a row that we've done the prepayment. Um, the police department cut $10,000 from their overtime budget and we reduced the Measure F expenses just simply to match the Measure F revenues. So Measure F, full 100% of Measure F revenues are still programmed to the Wharf, Jetty, and Flume, just at $11,000 less than previously. So uh, this is the list that was in your uh, agenda packet with the contract services, and I don't want to read each one, but we're happy to answer any questions if there's any questions on any of those reductions. I'd like to talk about it, but I'll, I'll wait till you're finished. Okay, okay. certainly. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to shift over to Steve right now, and he's going to cover the capital projects. You're still driving. All right. At the uh, request of the treasurer and city manager, we kind of looked at uh, public works work plan or uh, distribution of uh, administrative time that we spend and we came up with this pie chart that kind of shows how we split out our time um, on this is our you know what we would hope to achieve and it, it breaks it up into administration permits inspections public assistance stormwater program development review and then the two that kind of stick out there are the community projects and the CIP and the reason we showed it this way with, with the community projects and the CIP kind of separate is those are really the ones that we can adjust. The, all the other ones, um, for the most part, are pretty stagnant in the year in and year out basis. Um, we spend 17% of the time administration. That's mainly on my end, uh, managing crews, managing staff, um, permits and inspections. Uh, a lot of that is, um, you know, building permit, doing the inspections of projects as they're going through, and um, issuing encroachment permits um, is our big, big one. Um, Dan Danielle in my office spends quite a bit of her time doing that. Public assistance is, um, you know, calls, emails, uh, people coming to the counter. Um, we all spend a great deal every day doing that. Stormwater program, I kind of want to highlight that. That's, you know, the unfunded state mandate that we uh, reduce uh, stormwater pollution, uh, water, water that enters the creek in the ocean, and we spend a good 
good chunk of time doing that. It's almost Danielle's, the majority of Danielle's time is doing that. Development and review is strictly looking at building permit and planning applications. So that takes us to the community projects and the uh, CIP. So the community projects, and what I'm talking about, these are private projects that we end up working on that aren't really scheduled anywhere. Best example is probably Topaz and Jewel Street traffic. Um, it's obviously taken a, a large amount of time over the last year and a half. Uh, village employee permanent parking program, which we've implemented, um, took a large amount of my time uh, in getting it set up. Um, parking and loading issues along Capitol Avenue, trees, um, dealing with uh, issues of uh, our trees and Park Avenue and at the Rispin. Creekside access at the railroad, we built that fence. It took several meetings and negotiations with the property owner there to get that taken care of. Perry Park restoration and uh, code enforcement. Those are just examples of projects that kind of pop up that, that eat away in our time. So this is the same slide that we showed you two before. This is our distribution of labor. Like I said, the, the administration through the development uh, review kind of stays the same. And as we develop more community projects, we end up taking away from our CIP projects. So that's what happens. And the, the point here is just uh, make us all aware that the, these community projects, while certainly important, um, we need to be cognizant of the amount of time they take up in the Public Works Department. So this is the handout I gave just before the meeting. This is the top part of the existing projects that we're working on that were funded in previous years. I'm not going to run through them, but um, you have the list in front of you. You can see it kind of gives the, the um, amount of money that was identified for it, how much we've spent where it came from and um, how much is left to keep it going. With Kalosh on my staff now, we are working on all fronts to try and get these projects completed um, and feel good about that. These are the projects that have received funding allocations this year. Um, as Jim indicated, there's no general fund allocations to any of the CIP projects this year. That's either grant or measure D, RTC measure D or um, SB1 funds or Measure F funds. And so that's the allocation of new funding we have coming into the CIP for this year. And one project we haven't talked about is probably the um, biggest drain of time, and we're well, not drain of time, but use of time and money in the city is the library. Um, we uh, will be opening bids on that a week from today. It was delayed, it was supposed to be today, but we had to delay it to get some addendums out. And, um, you know, early indications are we should be getting some good bids. We anticipate getting six bids on that project. <coughs> Come back to Jim now. Yes. So at the uh, last hearing, there was a couple of items that the council requested that we follow up on. So the first of those was the community grant program. So the council adopted the improvements to the community grant program in 1617, setting up a two-year grant cycle. And the idea was to separate the budgeting from the allocation of the awards. So we do the budgeting in March through June. And then once we have the total amount fixed, then in the April, or I'm sorry, August through September timeframe, then we allocate the money, council allocates the money to the various uh, nonprofits. Uh, staff's proposing that the budget remain at 275,000 for both fiscal year 2018, 19, as well as 19, 20. The second item was the home reuse fund. So uh, the balance in that fund is just a little bit shy of 206,000. Those funds can be used for down payment assistance for first time home buyers, for uh, health and safety improvements, rehab projects for existing owner occupied properties, and as well as we can do uh, housing assistance for affordable housing projects within the city and we can work directly with developers on, on those. And I'm gonna hand it off to Jamie for these next few. So the next question that the council asked about was coming up with some options for the long-term PERS issues that the city is going to face. And, and, you know, I think the number one thing I want to stress is that this is the beginning of a dialogue with the council. This is going to be an issue that we're going to be confronting for years to come. Um, I don't expect that we're going to end it tonight. In addition, when we're talking about potential tax measures, our next regular meeting coming up in two weeks, we will have on the regular agenda is discussion of items to, um, 
direction to staff about what we may want to put on the ballot for the November election. So loosely, you know, we can talk about the PERS options and what we'll do about the increased expenditures. And really, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. One is, is we can grow revenue. Uh, and two is, is we can cut expenditures. That's at its most basic level. So we've listed out a couple different ideas here on new taxes or ways to grow revenue. I don't think they'll come as a surprise to anyone. Identifying the cannabis tax, which is when we spent some time talking about this spring. Uh, new hotels. New hotels generally bring in between three and six hundred thousand dollars. Of course, those aren't within the control of the city, as the city isn't a developer, uh, and they obviously take time to come to fruition. Should one come to pass. Uh, the TOT, each 1% of TOT is about $150,000 a year to the city, um, and it does require, again, going to the voters for approval if you were to change our TOT. Um, obviously, the city is heavily reliant on sales tax. It's a strong revenue stream to the city. Uh, each quarter percent local sales tax is about a million dollars in annual revenue, which is what we see in Measure F. Um, looking long term, frankly, we have identified sort of a weakness in the city is that our heavily we are heavily reliant on sales tax and going and increasing our reliance on sales tax when we imagine where sales tax may be in 10 years, whether that's going to be a, a revenue stream that's going to keep up with inflation. Uh, I think that those would be factors that the council would want to take into account. We can take a look at our fee schedule again. Uh, I know we went through that. It feels like just the other day, but the fee schedule is obviously obviously an opportunity to take a look at what our actual costs are for services and whether there's more um, cost recovery we can achieve. Contract services, whether it's looking for opportunities to contract services out, street sweeping example is one that we've um, obviously explored. Shared services, <clears throat> we're exploring that with the building department right now with Scotts Valley. Um, and then in other cases, whether it's more cost effective to bring projects in house, we've been very successful the last several years in doing some CIP type projects with our own staff. We have a very capable public work staff and they were able to repair the Hooper stairs and do the, the Esplan upper Esplanade Park project for significantly less than it would have been for contracting with a, a, a contractor to do that. And then in the long term, you know, it's really dependent on other expenditure reductions come down to council priorities and what the impacts are to service levels and what the community is willing to accept and what the council is willing to accept. So like I said, it's, it's an ongoing dialogue that's going to evolve over years, I think, and it's going to be refined as we get more revenue information and we see uh, where our taxes actually end up um, coming in over time. This is touching very quickly on the sort of the big picture work plan items. Steve talked about the CIP projects. Those CIP projects are obviously priorities for the council. Whatever we decide we're gonna be putting our money in, that's, those are important projects for the city. In addition, these are sort of the non-CIP type projects that staff has identified as priorities. If the council wishes to amend, add, subtract from this list. Certainly that's something we would look for feedback on. If we've got, gotten it right, that would also be helpful. <clears throat> we've also talked about the general fund balance ending at about $900,000. Uh, the FAC has reviewed this and recommended leaving it intact at this point in fund balance to offset potential future budget shortfalls as we struggle with the PERS increases. Um, other options the council could consider would be transferring some into the PERS trust. It does increase potential rate of return the city could achieve, but it really isn't intended as a short-term investment vehicle. It's really investing in the markets. And Do you attach a dollar to that? Mm -hmm. um, Hypothetically, if we put 500000 into the trust fund, what would we net? What would it gain us? So what it really gains you is the delta between the LAFE rate, which is 1.8%, as the finance direct mentioned, director mentioned earlier this evening, and then whatever the market does over the intervening time period that you have it in there. The risk, of course, is it's, it's you know, sort of classic financial advisor advice is don't invest in the stock market if you're expecting to only leave it there for a year or two, right? Because we all know stock markets go up and go down. If your time horizon is five to 10 years, Obviously, being in the market is a much better place to be than be sitting in, in life. So it really comes down to the time horizon. I think off the top of my head, I wouldn't recommend moving more than about $300,000 out into something like the PERS Trust. I think that we're going to want that fund balance because the last two quarters we've seen sales tax declines. 
and we're projecting a flat sales tax into next year and if we continue to see declines we potentially would be eating into that fund balance so <clears throat> my would you, would you explain the mechanism of the of the trust fund simply yeah, so the mechanism behind the trust fund, it, it, this is a, it's a relatively new thing that was authorized by, by the state uh, several years ago. And what it essentially allows us to do is to move money <clears throat> into a third party's hands that's holding it in trust for the city to be used for a specific purpose. And in this case, it's for PERS costs only. Now, it's quite flexible in the sense that right now our balance in that fund is about nine. Eight? It'll be a little over 800000 by the end of the year. A little yeah. over $800,000 by the end of the year. And we have more than $800,000 a year in PERS expenses in any given year. So in any given year, we could fully deplete the PERS trust to use to pay our PERS bill. Of course, it doesn't pay the bill the year after or the year after. <laughs> um, but it is. it can be used for that. And our PERS bill every year exceeds the value of the, to the trust at this stage. So it's fully liquid in any given year. If we ended up in a position where we had more than two or three million dollars in there, then it would be more than enough to cover one year's PERS bill. Um, so it wouldn't be fully liquid in any given year. What is that? What was the um, the rate on it in the last twelve months? I would have to look that up. I know we ha they had a down quarter at the beginning of the year. I did see that. Was it as low as the LAFE rate? Over the course of the year, I would guess not. It's hard to do. It's <laughs> Right. Okay. Right. Good. But they did have a down quarter the uh, January through March. They they did have a down quarter. Okay. So, Good. you know, to think about this, this is a lot like you probably invest in your own four hundred one k back home. Is is the city authorized putting six hundred thousand dollars this year, five hundred thousand dollars last year into the PERS trust? And so what we've done at a staff level is we've broken that up into individual payments over the course of the year, basically dollar cost averaging rather than taking the $500,000 and transferring it on day one and then watching the stock market decline 30% the next day, just like you do with a 401k, sort of moving in $100,000 in chunks in time, um, just to avoid the situation where you move it all in and you're betting everything on the market uh, performing well in the very short term. The other option would be to put money into the facilities reserve. Again, that's fully discretionary. There's obviously a lot of deferred maintenance around different city facilities, uh, and it certainly could be put to use and could be pulled back into fund balance at any, at any given time. So for this evening, there's a couple things. One is, is you receive the presentation. Two is provide us any direction. Um, are we headed in the right track? Is this what the council would like to see? Are there changes that we should be making? Uh, are there more questions that we can answer? Uh, we do, as soon as we get feedback about the community grants, whether or not we're going to allow new community grants to uh, um, grant res recipients to apply this year, we're, we're prepared as staff to release the, uh, the notice of funds available to our grant recipients. And then determine whether or not we want to hold the June hearing if we need to have a June 6th hearing on the budget or if we're prepared for adoption. So with that, staff is avail available for oh, questions. Let's go through questions. Stephanie, questions? <laughs> Well, first, I want to do the um, community groups in July rather than August and September because their budgets all start July 1st and they need the money. They need to know what's going on. Well, they need time to apply. And mm -hmm. so if, let's hypothetically, if we gave you direction as far as new grantees tonight, you could open up the application process. And what do we usually give them? 30 days. So by this time, the, by the end of June, we have all the applications in and I can get a committee formed. I can name them tonight, and we can have them, you know, in July taken care of. Sound right? Yeah. Good. I support that. Yep. I mean, I may, we might not even have to give them 30 days. If it's a shorter form, they can do it in a week. Because they, they're anxious to get the ball rolling, too. I, I understand, Mayor, Council members. Um, th they do have other items and we we get turnover within those groups so sometimes that takes long i think 30 days is a is a fair amount of time for them to um, in fact we just had a notice today of uh, one of our agencies a new new person taking over so when we when that happens you generally have to add some time so i i think there's going to be uh, a number of organizations that can get it done relatively quickly but there's also other ones that don't have the resources to 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 do it that then quick. at this juncture for clarity um, perhaps we can get a consensus from the council on whether or not we want to allow any new applicants. Personally, I think that 
the applicants that are there, anyone wants to drop out, that's fine. We can always use that money to give to others, but I'm not in favor of opening it to any new applicants. Anyone else want to chime in on this? I'm fine with that position. Kristen? Okay, so you've received direction. We are not going to accept any new applicants. We can open the application period, and then as soon as it comes back and, and we close it, then I'd like uh, Ed and Kristen to be the subcommittee to see where all the dollars lie, and they can bring it back to the council in July. Good. Carry on. Okay, That's I have okay some with Ed and Kristen? I have some other questions. Go ahead. Um, on the uh, changes to the contract services, <clears throat> just going down the list. The first one is United Way, $1,000. I think, isn't that for the community assessment project that we use every year, we participate in? It is. Interestingly enough, we discovered when we were going back through this with the fine tooth comb that we were double budgeting it, both in the community grant program and here. And so we realized every year we were contributing, I think it's actually $2,000 in the community grant program for the community assessment. This was frankly, a vestigial. It was just an old line item that wasn't getting billed and wasn't getting used. Okay, so we, we're just <laughs> yes. el eliminating that. Okay. Yeah, so it, they, they are still funded and we are still contributing okay. to the community okay. assessment project. Um, I would like to add, uh, have full funding for the recycling media. It's a Central Coast Tri-County project that I think Monterey County, San Benito County, and Santa Cruz, I used to be on this committee, but I'm, I haven't been for a number of years, but they pool their money to buy ad time on the radio and on television. And I haven't seen very many of them, but I think it's a good cooperative effort. Do you want to give us an update on that, Larry? Which, I'm sorry, which, which line item? <laughs> the uh, recycling media and the recycling New Brighton Middle School. I think we should add that back into the middle school, unless that has been, had it been a double line someplace else. The, the res, um, Air Council, the, the New Brighton, um, we, we've tried the last few years to get someone there to run the program, and they haven't had that person. Um, so that's one of the reasons we took it out this year. We just haven't had the response from, from the, the middle school. Um, at, at the other line, I, I would have to look at to see if um, we can cut that or not. Um, so we, we, get, we get funding from Cal Recycle um, that we use for Central Coast Media Recycling as well as other um, types of recycling um, yeah. initiatives. So if someone steps up from New Brighton, you can bring that back to us? Uh, yes. Good. Have you talked to the principal? I have not talked to the principal. Talk to the principal and have him shake the tree and find a teacher to <laughs> carry on this because that was a good program that we had for years. Okay. Um, I th anyway, I think that there was sort of a contract with the uh, recycling media people and, and that was our portion was $5,000. And then uh, down to the um, Silk Hill Creek fish monitoring, why are we reducing that? That was based on the actual contract amount. We realized we had a little fund balance there that we could reduce. Okay, from the same extent. thing with the Soquel Creek water monitoring? Right, it was the same. Okay, those are my only questions on that. Doc, questions? None? Kristen, any questions? Ed, the, go right ahead. Just uh, last, last uh, week or time we met, there were just two things that I was unsure if they were fully funded and I just want to make sure all the revisions. One was the sidewalks on park and the other was the Rispin. And you had said you were looking into it and you weren't sure and I just wanted, since we just got this, right. are both those projects fully funded or is there still a shortage? I suspect in the Rispin we're gonna have a funding shortage and then on the sidewalks I think we'll be fine. Okay, and any, do you wanna ballpark the shortage on the Rispin? Um, at this point, probably about $100,000. Uh, we're revising the plans right now, trying to tie that down. That's why I don't have an exact number. But Park, you think, is going to be okay? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Steve? Steve? So on the Rispin, this is just for the portion of the proposed plan that we're doing right now, I think, is the wall. So we, we have many more things like the pool and the bocce court and the... No, this is the full park project. This is the full... Pro okay, yes, thank you. Except for the much. fountain. I think Except we backed the fountain. the fountain out. Yes. Okay, and this includes the um, uh, arena or what? Um, Apple Theater, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. I didn't realize it. Okay. All right. I do have one other question. I'm sorry. Uh, you haven't gone down the road yet. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. So in terms of the grant programs, uh, we lost our, our uh, person who wrote grants and uh, CBDG grants, uh, the lady that did that. So, you know, that was uh, an income stream also. So what are we doing with that? And are we reaching out to an agency? Or are we uh, trying to get another person? Or so. So a couple things. Carolyn Flynn is no longer with the city. Right. Um, 
we, we have contracted with a group, Paul Ashby Group, and they actually ended up preparing the most recent CDBG grant application that we submitted, which was the 2.7 million, I believe, mm -hmm. for the Claire's project, and then to re restart our housing programs that we used our last CDBG grant allocation for. So I expect that that, if we are successful with that grant application, you can't apply for another CDBG grant until you've expended the prior funds. So we're good for a couple of years while we kind of burn through those funds. Mm -hmm. But if the relationship works well, the Ashby Group has been a real good partner so far, and we'll see if the grant application is successful, but has been a good partner so far with that process. So this is the first time we've used them? Um, in this capacity, I don't, we, they may have helped with some other elements in CDBG in the past, but this is, I think, uh, they've stepped up into a bigger role. Okay, thank you. One of the questions that staff is looking for direction on is the fund balance. Um, do we have a consensus on leaving it all in the general fund, putting any of it in the trust fund, um, putting a portion each? The Finance Advisory Committee has recommended putting the entire, keeping the entire amount in the general fund and not putting any in the trust fund. Is that accurate? That's what the fact. Okay, uh, Ed, you want to comment on that? Sure, I, I I would be open to putting a little bit of money into the Purdue Trust Fund, but if the facts recommended against it, I'm I'm okay with that decision. Mm -hmm. The concern I have is um, a lot of the money the general fund was was spent on completing the library, which means that a lot of the projects, which I could go down the list, things like the bathroom in Monterey Park and other, too many to name, uh, are being put on the back shelf. Uh, the one concern I have is that we've put quite a bit of money into the Rispin Fund, uh, and if that fund is short, I would be willing to authorize depleting the, the uh, general fund by the amount necessary to augment that to make sure that that project can be completed. I think although the citizens of Capitol have been waiting for a long time for the library, so have they for the completion of the Rispin. So I would be uh, in favor of, of depleting that number to fully fund the Rispin. Is this an appropriate time, or should we wait, Steve, until we actually have numbers come in on bids and see how short we really are? That would be my recommendation, yes, would be to wait until we have bids and final plans. But uh, I mean, I feel good about it, I mean, that, I that concept. If we were not to put money into the PERS fund other places and we were to leave it whole, then I would go along with that recommendation to wait until the, as long as we, I want to bring it out for a discussion. Absolutely. And, and, and if we don't go to the PERS fund and the money's still whole there with the understanding that there is some commitment to finish the risk. Yeah, and many other things. Sure. Just the no. Rispin for now. I, you know, I, I, we can get greedy on all kinds of other items. Baby steps. Yeah, I, I think the Rispin's a big thing we need yeah. to deliver on. Agreed. So. Kristen, do you want to comment on the, the fund balance? Yeah, you know, I, I was going to say I think that we should go with the FAC recommendation to leave uh, all 900000 in, but I'm, I'm not against the idea of taking the $100,000 and putting that towards Rispin either. So either one of those two I'm fine with. I'm not sure when that When the I'm time comes. Yeah, when the time comes. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the PERS Trust Fund. It doesn't sound like it's one of the greatest investments. It's a good mechanism for the long term. I guess that's, that's sort of the take home message on that. It's a great mechanism for the long term. The question becomes is how are we, you know, is this something that we're gonna be tapping into in the next two or three years? Um, and if that's the case, it's probably not the right time. I'm not hearing a lot of love from the finance director and that's always my bellwether for <laughs> whether something happens. Anything else? Nope, that's it. On to you, Jacques. Yeah, so you know, the fact, I think part of the discussion was the illiquidity of the, the money if it went into that fund. So right. maybe you comment on that. Well, we, we were, very concerned that um, because of reduced sales tax and you know all of the various crises that are looming, uh, that we should keep stay as liquid liquid as we can uh, in this this coming year, so that um, yeah we don't have it, the money tied up in some fund that we can't get too quick. I would point out that we have enough money in the trust fund now to fund a single year of PERS, so anything we put into it we would most surely use next year. So it, it's not like this trust fund is in a lock money way that we can't use for PERS, right. which is why it's there. But So it's year by year. But I, I go along with the will of the council, I mean, one way or the other. Uh, one more comment about Ed. So in, in conjunction with the library, it'd be nice to have both projects sort of in sync a little bit in terms of Rispin and the library, because that's gonna be a whole new area of the city. It's just all priorities. That's yeah. Yeah. No, I, I realize, sorry. Stephanie? I don't, I don't have any strong preference about it. Uh, I just wanna, I agree with the treasurer, though. I want to have a discussion about the long-term financial plan for the city. I think it's great to increase the TOT, put that on the ballot. <clears throat> I think it's great to try to look for, for other sources and 
not crazy about looking at our service for fees. We've, we've, we've raised them and raised them and raised them, and we always used to have them just a real reasonable level, but I understand we need, we need money, but I'm not crazy about, you know, I've argued against the um, $500 fee to appeal something, you know. You know, I think some of our fees have got, just gotten really too high for the average member of the public. So, um, but I would like to have a discussion about what we think we're gonna do in a couple of years. Um, but I like some of the ideas, the cannabis tax, who knows, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what that does. I'd, uh, my comments are, thank you very much, Jim. I see all the department heads here. Thank you, Chief, for you know preemptively reducing your overtime budget. That's wonderful. Thanks for being part of the team. All the department heads really jumped on this and saved us a lot of money um, and have always done that. Uh, and it, are there any questions of any of the department heads that are sitting I here tonight? I have another comment um, about the projection for a 75-room hotel. Don't hold your breath about that one. Um, I don't know whether the uh, theater site can actually hold 75 rooms with everything else they're gonna do there. I mean, that would be a massive, pretty big development there. So I would say 45 rooms, you know, project, you know, something like that. We'll give you 80 rooms on 41st Avenue, how's that? I'll there trade you. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it just depends. Trade but. you Baltic Place for Park Place? No, yeah. okay. Um, then I'd like to entertain a motion at this time, if it's not, you know, too crazy, for the adoption of this budget. I so, so move to adopt this uh, budget. As a point yeah. of clarification, we I do actually like to have to bring back the resolutions. There's some specific resolutions. Un that understood, have to, yeah. understood, but, but we want to tell you where we are. So yeah. I have a motion to approve the budget as presented and amended. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Harlan? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Botworth? Aye. Mayor Termini? Aye. Anything else to tell us, staff? Well, I think the next action would be to cancel the remaining budget hearings that we have on June 6th. 6th and 21st. Oops, 6th and 21st. And then what we will do at a staff level, the June 14th agenda is looking pretty rough. So I think we bring back the resolutions for adoption of the successor agency budget and the city's budget on <coughs> June 28th. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, great work. And final comments. From our well, I, I esteemed want, council. I just want to echo what you said. I want to commend the finance director for, it makes our job simple when you come. I mean, obviously if there's not a lot of things to do, it makes our job easier. So I appreciate all the time and effort from all the department heads, including Steve, Katie, every chief. So I appreciate that effort. So thank you very much. Anyone else? Good night, staff. Good night, Capitola. Be nice to each other. Record. That's right.